Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem insert, delete, get random all in O of one time. So as the problem says, we're basically implementing these three uh, methods and we wanna design them in such a way that we can uh, do all these operations in constant time. We're given a single class, it's called randomized set. It has a constructor, which we can use however we want. And it has three methods that we need to implement, insert. So, which is just, as it says, we're inserting a value. If the value though already exists in our set, then we're not gonna add it twice but if it doesn't already exist we're going to return true from this method if it does already exist then we return false uh, the other method remove is similar we can only remove a value if it's actually present in the set and if it is present we remove it and return true if it's not present we just return false the more interesting method is get random uh, basically is supposed to return a random value of all the uh, values that are currently contained within our set we know each value in the set is gonna be unique, and uh, when we return a random value, each value has to have the same probability of being returned. So I'm gonna take you through the thought process of coming up with a optimal solution for this. It's pretty tricky in some ways though, but I think it's also intuitive once you understand it. So this problem is pretty easy when you just take these two methods in isolation. So inserting a value and removing a value in constant time is pretty easy when you have a data structure called a hash set. And the hash set will actually be even more helpful because we'll also be able to know in O of one time if a value already exists or if it doesn't already exist. So, uh, you know, rather than using a list and searching through that list, we can check that in a hash set pretty easily. And then we can return true or false from either of these functions, uh, depending on the result. So I think the simple answer for these two methods is literally to just use a hash set. But the problem comes when we get to the third method, the more interesting one, get random. Getting a random value isn't very easy, especially with the exact same probability. Even built-in functions can't do it perfectly, but that's exactly what we're gonna do. We're just gonna use a built-in function to do that. The easy way to, to get a random value, suppose if you just had a list of like three elements or something, you just take the indexes zero, one, two, and then from these indices, we would generate a random value that is is within this range and you can use some like standard built-in Python function or Java or whatever to do that but the th the problem is we would need the indexes right we would pick a random index and then you know suppose the random one would be this one uh, then we'd get the value at that index and then return it so this is the random value we would return but we can't really do that with a hash set we can't index a hash set hash sets are unordered when we generate a random value, it has to be of a continuous range like this. I mean, we technically could convert the hash set into a list, but that would take O of n extra memory. So what we're quite kind of realizing here is we can't just maintain a hash set. We also have to maintain a list at the same time. So every time we add a value to our hash set, we also add a value to our list or array. So in that way, getting a random value will be an O of one time operation. I'll show you how to do that in the code. In Python, it's pretty easy. I think it's pretty easy in most languages. But now, actually, the problem might be a little bit subtle. So let's take a look at an example. So we're actually gonna go through our own example rather than the one down here. But let's say first we wanted to insert one. Then we would, you know, very simply call our insert function. We would check is one in our hash set. We can do that in O of one time. It's not in our hash set. So we add one and we add it to the end of our array, which is currently empty. So we can just add the one over here. Let's say next we want to add a two. Oh, and by the way, we'd return true from the insert function. And obviously if we wanted to get a random value right now before we insert the two, uh, there's only one value in our list. So when we generate the index, of course, it's gonna be this index zero, and then we would return one. So pretty straightforward. Next, we add a two. We do the exact same thing. We add it, to, we check if it's in our hash set, it's not, we add it, we append it to the end of this list. Now, if we wanted to add one in this case we check is it in our hash set yes it is so we don't add it to the hash set and we don't add it to the list if now if we wanted a random value we would look at the two values here we generate a random value between zero and one because those are the indexes of these and then we return one of them whichever one gets returned 
Now, if we wanted to remove two, for example, first we'd check, is it in our hash set? It is, so we'd pop it from the hash set. And then from our array, we would just pop two from the end of the list. And then if we wanted to get another random value, we could just get this one. We would take the length of the array and generate a random value between uh, the valid indexes. Now, that was easy because in that case, we removed a value from the end of our array. But what if we were actually removing a value from the middle of our array? What if we were actually going to remove one? And to actually demonstrate this even further, suppose it actually was a value in the middle of our array, suppose it was two, then we'd have to do something like this. Now, how do you even remove a value from the middle of the array? Don't you have to shift everything else over? And if we do that, then it's an O of n time operation. So the problem we discovered is if we have a list and we have a hash set, we can do everything efficiently except for the remove operation, which takes O of n time. Is there a better way we can do this remove operation with these given data structures. The first thing is if we were removing two from the list, we don't even know what index two is at. We'd literally have to search through the entire array to find two. We know for sure it exists from our hash set, but we don't know where it is. So how about one change we can make? I erased the set part because now we're actually going to be using a hash map. We're going to be mapping each value that we inserted to the index that it was inserted at. So in this case, one would map to zero, two would map to one, three would map to two, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So that's one part of the remove function. Now, if we wanted to remove two, we know exactly where it's at. Can we just kind of erase that value? Can we just set it to a default value of zero or something? Not really, because then if we generate a random value, what if it landed at this spot? How about we replace another value uh, with, uh, we basically move another value over here because we know two does not exist anymore. How about we take three and add it over here? That kind of works, but now the problem is if we generate a random value, three has a disproportionate chance of being selected, right? Each value is supposed to be unique, but now we have two copies of three. So what should we do? Well, remember we could remove values from the end of the array in O of one time, just by popping the last value or just, you know, just saying, okay, this value doesn't exist. The size of the array is smaller now. So how about a clever way that we can handle this is taking the last value copying it into the index that we're removing from and then popping this value because now we are left with an array of size two we remove this value and then uh, if we want to generate a random value we don't consider this position a valid index anymore we just generate from these two they're contiguous and we can generate a random value that's we we accomplished our exact goal we did all of this in o of one time because we didn't have to shift the entire array over we only had to swap one value in the array oh and one thing don't forget to do in the code is then update the mapping in the hash map so three originally mapped over here but now it should map over here here. So using these kind of tricks, we can implement all of the methods in O of one time. So now let's code it up. Okay, so now let's code it up. Remember, we have two uh, data structures, num uh, map and num a uh, list. So we won't get confused which is which. So the insert operation is definitely going to be the most straightforward. So first we want to know, does value even exist uh, yet? So is val in our self dot num map? This is the Boolean value that we're going to return. So how about we set this to a variable called result? You don't have to do this, but I think it just saves one line of code, which doesn't really matter, but I kind of like doing it this way. So we know for sure this is what we're going to return. Uh, value is either in the map or it's not when we initially start this function. Uh, but if uh, not result, so if the value is not in the map, then we're going to add it to the map, this value, and what index are we gonna map it to? Well, the length of the num list at this point, because now we're going to add this value to the end of that num list. So that's the index that it's going to be inserted at. So then we can take num list and append to it this value. So I think we're good here, but actually I just realized I think we had this backwards. We're gonna return true if the value is not in the map. So we wanna execute this 
if the value is not in the map, then we return true. If it's already in the map, then we return false. So now to do remove, which is gonna be pretty similar, but a little bit opposite. So in this case, the result is gonna be if value is in the map because that means we're gonna return true, we were able to remove it. But if it didn't exist in the map, then we were not able to remove it. So if the result is true, then we are able to remove it. So let's do that removal, which is gonna be a little bit complicated. So first we know value exists, we wanna remove it from the map and we wanna remove it from the array. But we need to get the index that it exists at in the array, so let's get the index from the hash map. That's exactly what it's for. Now we have the index. Uh, and what do we wanna do at that index? We wanna take the last value and then move it to that index. How do we get the last value? Well, we can take num list and get the last index. In Python, you can actually use negative one to get the last one, or we could just take the length minus one. Uh, but now we have the last value. So now in our num list at that different index, we want to set the last value here. And from the num list, now we want to pop the last value because we just moved that last value over here. So we can remove it from the end of the list. And last but not least, let's update the index. So for uh, num map, the last value uh, was originally at the last position, but now it's at a different index. So we want to update that mapping and the original value that we're deleting can now be removed from the map. So we can do that in Python like this, self.numMap value, delete it. So I believe those are all the operations that we talked about and now we're doing them. Notice how this is all pretty much O of one time. We're not doing anything fancy. One thing you might be wondering though is what if we only had one value in the map and the uh, the list anyway? Then what would we do? How would we even swap a value? Like would this function work? Or should we write some separate code to handle that case? Well, believe it or not, this actually does work if we only had one value as well. As long as you have the delete operation go last. But if you're not convinced, I recommend you kind of do an exercise and check what would happen with this code if we only had one value in the map and the list. Try to prove it to yourself whether it works or whether you think it doesn't. But I will say that it does work. Okay, now for the random value, which is the easy part, we can just return, uh, I think it's random.choice of an array. So in this case, our array is self.numList. Usually in other languages like Java and C++, you can just generate a random integer that is you know, a valid index of this list and then get a value. I think that's probably what this is doing under the hood, but this is just a easier way to do it in Python. But it's pretty easy to do in most languages, though I never remember these built-in functions. So I'm pretty sure your interviewer would, would not expect you to memorize it because I think that's kind of dumb. But this is the entire code, all of it's very efficient. Let's run it to make sure that it works. And as you can see on the left, yes it does, and it's very efficient. So I really hope that this was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. It really supports the channel a lot. Consider checking out my Patreon where you can further support the channel and hopefully I'll see you pretty soon. Thanks for watching.